So, today I'm going to give you a brief overview of the IoT framework I've put together. Later on, just to discover that um, there are other ways, potentially much better ways, like the Modbus protocol to do this. However, uh, I found it to be a very interesting exercise to build a framework from the ground up with the ideas you think are correct and then doing iterations and polishing them so they are better and you get new ideas so you implement them and it's just this snowball effect so um i created this framework it's obviously software that is uh, dedicated to run an arduino and um, i've split the actual functionality into four threads that run on the arduino and yes i understand the arduino is uh, only a one core quote unquote CPU. Um, but still, you can run certain tasks in certain intervals, and there's a library for this. I'll include the link to all of this blog that is in the description, just in case you want to read it and go through some things, download the libraries, and have a track at it yourself. So basically, four threads watchdog, self explanatory. Software crashes for any reason, it will restart the entire Arduino and we're back in action. Health, this will upload the uh, health, quote unquote, of the actual IoT node. And uh, this will be like free memory, uptime, chipset temperature, and maybe something else if the uh, hardware supports it. Now, this is an additional sensor uh, it's usually a temperature humidity sensor uh, that will upload data to the IoT server as well and this can do things like monitoring your uh, what you call it humidity obviously and temperature inside the enclosure so you know that you haven't been compromised so that's your thread number three in a nutshell and the last one, number four, is a custom one. You can literally modify it to do whatever it needs. It can deal with relays or an external trigger, etc., etc. As you can tell, they have uh, standard default times that they operate, and uh, they can be adjusted once the node is deployed. And that's the big thing about this uh, framework that uh, you don't have to get the you know device out from deployment somewhere high up and you have to grab a ladder and get it down connect it to a computer and a usb cable and all that jazz and and upload a new code you can literally change the behavior of the node using a web browser or a url command to send commands to the node to adjust things so uh yeah, I had to think about this. There are quite a few commands. So I'm going to just scroll down here so we can see stuff. And the first things here, the 112, and 13, 114, are the commands. They have their own unique set of parameters that the uh, framework will accept. So they will be slightly different. I haven't documented all of them yet because they're quite straightforward. And yes, you can uh, pin protect uh, the node. So you, someone on the network can't just really nilly willy change things once they get a hold of this documentation and the node and start to hack it, quote unquote. Um, so yes, uh, you go your IoT server settings. We can also modify once the node is deployed again. Uh, obviously it will restart the node, but it doesn't matter. You can change the IP, the IP settings. Does it send the sensor data as in the thread? And you got quite a few settings. There's even a relay section. So if the node has some relays, you can actually uh, configure how they behave on startup. Will they be on and off? Do you reverse their behavior because the wires are wrong or something? I forgot why I did that, but I definitely found it useful for reasons uh, 
and you have your thread number four at the end quote unquote and you can uh, obviously disable enable and it has three variables i don't know why i call them xyz but uh, that you can change uh, because you've probably wrote a custom code there and you can use those three variables you can adjust so that's really cool and now the other interesting thing that I've added as well is that at the moment it heavily relies on an IoT server quote unquote again uh, which is just a uh, at the moment a Raspberry Pi uh, with a web server running some PHP and uh, I think there's one PHP file that listens for everything and then initiates the commands on the on the database yeah the relevant for now and uh, what I've added here you can actually change the behavior of the entire node to not send any data to the IOT server and just literally talk to a different node on the network and I will upload a video as well and I'll save a link and probably have a card up there somewhere um, to showcase that that they're literally two nodes on the closed network with a switch and they will talk together and I think what they do there is like a temp and external temperature sensor once it reaches a certain reaches a certain threshold it triggers an LED very simple demo but you should get the general gist uh, of what it does and I think this is pretty cool and uh, yeah, pro again Modbus would probably kill this like million times but remember I didn't know about Modbus before but still I find it really fascinating that you can build something like this from scratch just thinking about the problem and it's kind of like reinventing the wheel but uh, you're kind of well not proud of yourself happy with yourself because you did it yeah you, no one told you how to do it you just did it on your own and it's like ah okay something worked and uh, you got control commands, the temperature from the sensor, you can... Okay, I remember these now. I will also uh, upload a video of a demo of this uh, to showcase this particular behavior that you can control the relays and I think I'll have one uh, node that has a relay attached to it and the framework controls it remotely. And you got some other commands and uh, like 111 will get all of the data of the settings from the node and display on the screen in a very like uh, JSON-y mode type thing but not really but it is it is what it is it does work um, set, set max node temperature I think this is when the node sends an alert to the IoT server when the temperature exceeds whatever you set and oh this is quite fun uh the request spacer uh, this is basically how many commands can you ask the node uh, for example to limit the commands to be only one per five seconds or one per 20 seconds so someone doesn't flood it uh with i don't know a brute force attack to get the right pin although the pin now is only four uh four uh, digits i think and these changes have been done literally now nearly what oh, ooh, that's going to be old now 2020 ooh, i was bored and yeah so here for example you have uh, how would you do things and what's the structure and it's even explained here for you properly so you you have your ip address then your uh, if i can get this to work then you got your uh, command code 113 then you got your pin and then you got whatever i wanted to change here i totally don't remember now what that means so i'll check in a second what 113 is definitely 999 means a reboot so for this you only need uh, like uh, two parameters if you want to restart a node you just need the actual restart code and the pin and it probably says here somewhere what 113 means but I am too lazy I'm just gonna oh, okay it changes the IP address of the node yeah see it's that easy so what it does what to do change IP 
and uh, what the pin code is and the IP address in hex. I think I did that because it's easier to pass the output. It's kind of not the easiest to figure out as a human to look at it, but yeah. Um, so it's easier for the code at the, at the uh, node to pass it and convert it, rather than me trying to figure out some fancy schmancy stuff. Uh, so yeah, that's a general uh, overview of the framework. I think it was a quite interesting uh, thing to do as a project. It's not fully finished. Well, all of these functions do work. It's just there are more things to add. And obviously, I'm limited by the uh, amount of space on an Arduino Uno or Nano uh, because this is limited flash storage. And But yeah, this is just a general overview. I'll add the links to the actual uh, blog, the videos demonstrating them in actual real world, the P2P and the IoT server demo with a fan and a relay, I think. All right, I think I'm done babbling for the day. All right, take care.